testimony. We'll give him a shout of praise. You're so good. You're so good. He's so good. He's so good. For the Lord is good and His mercy, His mercy endures. His mercy endures. Hallelujah. If you've traveled here, God bless you. We are honored to have you here in the building. Those of you watching by live stream, thank you for joining us. Uh, we ask everyone here to silence your phones and electronic devices. And then we still have service tomorrow through Friday. So if you're watching and you're in the region, you're close, or you can catch a quick plane, get on it and get here. You can be a part of these meetings. Uh, we want to let you know there is Spanish translation available online and in person uh, for all the services. So if you are here and you would like Spanish translation or you're going to bring somebody, go to the information center. They'll get you the information information you need and the help you need. And if you're watching by live stream, uh, go to Deframe Ministries. If you're on a different platform, Facebook uh, or uh, YouTube, go to deframeministries.org slash Slate, and that will get you to where you need to be to, to listen uh, with the Spanish translation. And you can purchase the Spanish CDs of all the services at the bookstore as well. We're going to have um, child care available, of course, for the evening services for everyone, zero to five, ages zero to five, and child care is available for ministers' children in the morning, ages zero to five. And then um, if you're a minister and you just got here, make sure you uh, register in the uh, at the information center. We just want to have 
have record of your attendance and uh, make sure that we can direct you towards parking that we have available for you. Uh, of course, if you have a testimony, we want to hear of that testimony. And that's not just for people here in the building, that's for those of you watching online. Uh, whether meeting or previous meetings, I would encourage you to uh, go to our website. There is a, a QR code that you can use right there up on the screen. Uh, you can send us an email. You, If you like social media, you can DM us or message us, and we would love to hear from you. Our team will get back with you. Uh, we thank you for submitting those testimonies ahead of time, uh, and we are expecting with you that if you're watching, ex believing to receive some things from God this week or, or from tonight, we believe with you that all uh, that you came for and all that you're watching for, it is yours in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, and then tomorrow, we're gonna have David Ellis doing worship training sessions an hour after the morning service, and he'll do that Thursday as well, and Pastor Noel uh, doing prayer service uh, as well, the uh, prayer school, and that's, both of those we're making one hour after the morning uh, service, so you'll have to be here to kind of know what time, or if you're going to attend later, just be able to watch and know what time we end. We always announce that time at the end of that morning service, and uh, uh, ministers, if you want to get the CD or DVD set, which is also available to everyone, uh, you can get that at the bookstore, but for those ministers that are here, if you will place your order, let's see, uh, by Wednesday, uh, they can get them to you by the end of the week. But if they're after Wednesday, uh, we'll have to mail them to you, which is fine as well. Uh, and then we are going to be celebrating Pastor Nancy's 40 years of ministry Thursday night. And um, if you... If you didn't know, and we'll talk about this, she, uh, when she married Dr. Dufresne, that is when she went into the ministry. So it would have been their 40 years anniversary this year. And uh, she has really uh, uh, stepped in and walked in uh, many different ministry offices. Uh, so we, we often hear about her pastoring uh, and we know that she walks in that prophet's office, but uh, you'll get to see some times of of her uh, in the evangelist as she uh, was in the tent meetings and doing the tent meetings and she'll talk about some of these things. So you don't want to miss Thursday night. You don't want to miss if you can't be here, watch live stream as well, but we're just going to honor her that night and uh, just be believing God uh, with us that we're going to bless her real good and, and find out from the Holy Ghost what it would, uh, what he would have you to bring just to give her personally. We're going to just bless her personally. Amen. Uh, and you say, why do you bless her personally? Because it, 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 this is her life. <laughs> You know, um, the ministry isn't the building. <laughs> it's not that building over here. It's not the property. The ministry is man and so, uh, or the woman. So we want to make sure that we are taking care of her because she has uh, sacrificed her life. And really, I, I don't like that word. Cyrus devoted her life and, and set aside her life uh, unto God. And so we want to honor her in that. Amen. Um, but we also will have double up offering night that Thursday night and ministry the sick on Friday night but every night if if it is your last service tonight or the next few nights we will take time Pastor Nancy will take time to minister to you um, and then we want to let you know a little something that we have going on around here We've had for, oh my goodness, uh, the last now 13 years, and that is World Harvest Bible Training Center. Our Bible school, it is a full-time Bible school. We love our Bible school. We love our students. It is an honor and a privilege that God would ask us uh, to have a Bible school. I know there's many Bible schools out there. Uh, there's oftentimes, you know, churches will have Bible schools uh, to help train up their people, uh, but I tell you what, God has filled this Bible Bible school with people from all over the world. They just keep coming. Amen. And uh, the Bible school is, it is full time. It's Monday through Thursday, 830 to 1130, which allows time for uh, those who come to work jobs and, and or some of them like to, to work in the evenings and volunteer in the afternoons here at the ministry. Um, there's many different options. Uh, it is not just a school where you're going to be taught the Bible. 
Uh, there's many students that come here and they've been raised in wonderful churches, uh, ministers' kids that have been raised in wonderful homes. They know the Bible, uh, but there is something that just Bible teaching can't get you, and that is impartations. Uh, so there is a heavy emphasis here on impartations. Uh, some to some, the Bible school is a rescue to their life, to their thinking. They didn't know we've got some that come and they're they're new uh, believers, and God has led them here, and they're just growing in their knowledge of the word and some who have knowledge of the word and they need to come where God has impartations come and be where God has impartations for their life uh, not just knowledge uh, but there is going to come with those impartation greater revelation to get into to further revelation you need another man another woman to help you get into those things they don't just come uh, by just simply uh, times of study they come by times of sitting uh, and, and feeding off of the revelation and the anointing and the mantle that is on another man. And we are facilitating that in this school. We have regular instructors that are here um, all throughout the week and um, as the, the, the school year goes on. But we also have guest instructors. Many of those guest instructors are here. They come for a week, uh, a week at a time and they'll just pour into the students that whole week. They share things that they will tell the students, I don't share this in my own pulpit. I don't share this over live stream. Uh, this is something that God is, is drawing out. The students are drawing out of them and God is prompting them uh, to feed to the students, to give to the students. Many times it's it's experiences of walking with God, stories uh, and, and times that they experience things in God and the power of God and times that they missed it, times that they succeeded, uh, times where uh, they, they needed to go to another other level and how did they get there they're they're giving all of this to these students at a very very low price uh, you cannot put a price on someone's life and so uh, I believe with the cost of of our tuition I don't quite know what that is I probably should um, uh, but Joel, where's Joel? Raise your hand, Joel. This is, I, I call him our Bible school director. Uh, he directs all activities coming and going. Those who uh, need information, Joel is right here. There's a table out there also in the foyer. We've got many students here. I would like to show you if we could, those ministers that are guests in the Bible school, would you please stand so that the people can see how many of you come? Amen. They're here, uh, Brother David, I don't know where he went. He comes and um, just preaches fire down on this school. Um, the, the Pentecostal gets to come out. And, uh, but I am grateful because they come at their own expense. That's the other thing. They are actually sowing seed into the next generation. And um, what a, a privilege uh, it is to be a part of a school where those will come. And that's how rich uh, this school is and how rich the word is, is they're gonna come at their own expense and their own time and step away from their own ministries to come and feed the students and pour into students, lay hands on the students. I think all of them, by the end of the week, they all take students and lay hands on them and impart to them. Um, so again, if you're interested in the next school year, now is the time to inquire, to start making movement. Don't wait uh, for some kind of fleece or sign or word. Pastor's not going to call you out. She's not going to tell you what to do. Your pastor may not tell you what to do, but the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, he is prompting you right now. If you sent even a little bit of a desire or something on the insides like that, it, that, that seems right for me. Start making movement in that direction. Uh, get information. Don't sit back on your heels waiting. Uh, faith always has movement with it. So you'll need to make movement have information in the foyer. We have 50% off registration fee if submitted by July 15th. You can also go to our website. Uh, we also have on our social media, uh, the school has its own social media page and you can see a little bit of student life and ministry life on that social media.
page. Uh, that's World Harvest Bible Training Center. Uh, we also have, it looks like uh, there is some new merch out there. Oh, a long sleeve. I didn't know we had a long sleeve. <gasps> okay. I like this one. Um, I didn't know we had this. This is great. It is new. Okay, so this says Jesus uh, is the healer with our logo. And then on the back, it also says Jesus is the healer. So you'll want to get, this is a long sleeve. That is a personal favorite of mine. Huh? Yeah, that's your handwriting. That is, if you want Pastor Nancy's signature. I don't know, are you going, are you going to sign these, Sharpie? In the right now. Um, this is her her writing that says Jesus is the healer. And so, uh, again, we like long sleeves in California. Uh, it, it stays cool for a good portion of the year, but sometimes it's not sweatshirt. Sometimes it's not T-shirt. This is a great in-between. Amen? Um, and then these three books are, we. I don't know if we have any bundles, but this is a good one if you're looking, where do I start this is the starting place of buying material of Pastor Nancy's. And this is a sound, disciplined mind, peace, living free from worry. And answer it. You say, how could I ever be free from worry? Because Jesus set you free. But everything he sets you free from, you have to learn how to take your authority, take your stand. He's always... Uh, uh, like Brother Coleman said, we are not the, the sick trying to get healed. We're the healed and sickness is trying to be put on us. You're already free from worry. He's just trying to see if you'll take that thought, if you'll live according to that thought, if you'll make decisions according to fear and worry and anxiety, will you act on fear? Or are you going to act on faith? And these books, what they'll do is they'll set you free from your own mind and give you the mind of Christ, give you the mind of God. So if you're looking for a place to start when it comes to materials, this is, we call it our mind set. Uh, victory is won and lost in the thought life. So uh, if you can have victory in your thoughts, you can have victory in every arena. I would encourage you if you don't know what to get, even if you say, I just need healing in my body. Healing in your body is going to start with your agreement in your mind about healing. Amen. Uh, so those books are out there and this one goes along with it. Don't put up with it. Amen. This is a teaching, audio teaching with Pastor Nancy. You can, uh, you can get a hold of. Now our favorite offering. No, me. Oh, I'm receiving an offering, aren't I? Okay, it's a church offering. We got a service on Tuesday night. This is our church service. Uh, World Harvest Congregation, go ahead. If you brought an offering, your tithe, we're gonna receive an offering for World Harvest Church. Our midweek is on Tuesday nights. You say, why are you having your midweek on Tuesday nights? Uh, while you're preparing your offering, make everything out to World Harvest Church. You can go to, go to defrayministries.org slash give, WHC if you're doing text to give. And I will tell you why we have our midweek on Tuesday nights. Uh, many years ago, Pastor Nancy and Dr traveled all over the world and together and they would do meetings Wednesday through Friday. Uh, Pastor Nancy would do Thursday or Thursday morning, Friday morning, and uh, dad would do Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. So she was able to do midweek and teach the congregation Tuesday night and they would fly out early in the morning and uh, head across country and get to the location they needed to be at. So that is why our midweek is not like everyone else on a Wednesday. It's on a Tuesday. Uh, so are you ready to give? Ushers, go ahead and come forward. Let's wait on the people. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you for this local church. We thank you for the plan that you have for this place and for calling us to be a part of it. We thank you for every giver in here. And we say, Father, that there is an abundant harvest that belongs to those that are giving tonight. Devil, you take your hands off of that harvest. Angels of God, ministering spirits, you're going out and you are bringing in that harvest. You're opening doors of financial opportunity. You're returning turning lost funds back in multiplied fashion. And we thank you for divine ideas that belong to this era. They are to those in here who are generous givers. In Jesus' name, amen.
the Lord everybody. Good evening, good evening. Well, uh, this is a different offering. We're going to receive the expense offering tonight, and we're going to take a moment and encourage you in your faith. You know, uh, are you a giver? If you want to be an ongoing giver, you also have to be a receiver at some point. Is that right? Otherwise, you run out, can't give anymore. And if you're going to be a receiver from God, you need faith. You need faith. You can't receive without it. And if you need, if you want faith, you need to hear the word. That's the only way faith comes. And so that's why we take some time. It's to encourage your faith. It's not to pull more out of you. It's to put more in you. Amen. And so uh, if you would, please take uh, your scriptures. And I would like to turn to one of the scriptures, actually, that we read this morning in the service um, that, uh, of course, caught, caught my eye when we went by it, and it's in Genesis 15, where we had, uh, where we were this morning, and I'll tell you, this morning just blessed me. I know it blessed you, too, if you were here. He called it thoughts on righteousness. It was more like a manifesto on righteousness, wasn't it? It, it was, it was strong. It was so good. It was strong. Uh, but as we were reading today in Genesis chapter 15, I noticed, uh, where the Lord was speaking to Abraham, or Abram in this case, in the 13th verse, Genesis 15, 13. And it says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety, or know for sure, that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and you'll, you'll notice this. And afterward, they shall come out with great substance. Great. Well, you want to say those two words a time or two or three? Say it. Great substance. Great substance. One more time. Great substance. You know what that means? That's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Great substance. And really, the next verse says, and you'll go to your fathers in peace and be buried in a good old age. So um, the reason this is so significant to us and not just to them is that, and, and almost all Bible students and scholars would agree on this, that uh, this was prophetically speaking of the, the future people of God, the nation of Israel, as they became known. And uh, their journey from bondage to freedom, most everybody agrees, that is symbolic or, or uh, prophetic of our deliverance and freedom in Christ. Or we could just say our redemption. It's, it's a picture of our redemption. And really, it's, uh, it's the premier picture of redemption in the Old Testament. It is, it is the premier example. And of all the benefits of redemption, which we understand there's quite a number, uh, there, there's a lot. I mean, there's peace of mind, and, and, and you could just go on down the list and all the things you've experienced, right? But of all the, all the benefits of our redemption, Scripture highlights prosperity and healing. I didn't write it, but it's there. I mean, it's, why did he say that? Why didn't he say they'll come out and be so happy? They'll come out <laughs> and be free people. No, what did he say? They will come out with great substance and they'll live a good long life. Well, we won't turn there, but if you, you read forward to the book of Exodus where this actually happens, um, on, the, on the event 
the event where they were to come out, and, and can I say it this way? The premier event that pictures our redemption is the crossing of the Red Sea. And right before that happened, the Lord dealt with the children of Israel. He said, every person, you need to go to your neighbors and you need to ask of them uh, jewels, gold, silver, and, 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 and just ask. For, and the Bible says that they spoiled the Egyptians. Now, that's not talking about like when you spoil your grandchild or something. No, no, they plundered. They plundered. Now, we're talking about Egypt, friends. Egypt was by far the wealthiest nation on earth, and no nation came close to the riches of Egypt until maybe Babylon centuries later. Egypt had, uh, they, they mined huge amounts of gold and silver every year. I mean, they, they had what nobody else had. So in one, in one act, in one event, God's people ended up with the bulk of the wealth of the world. And that is that, and, and then they took that and they crossed the Red Sea with it. And that is the premier example of our redemption, amen, coming out of Egypt. And what did it feature? It featured great substance prosperity. And then now looking back on that, if you were to read, which we won't turn there, but if you read Psalm 105, verse 37, some of you know it. It says, he brought them forth. Talking about that journey from Egypt, the psalmist said, he brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them. Again, all the things you could say about our redemption, and what did the Bible highlight? Healing and prosperity. Amen. We're not saying that's more important than, than spiritual things. We're not saying that, but the Bible points it out. Huh? Now here's what's so, here's what's, uh, so important. If it's in the picture, how many know it has to be in the reality? If it's in the prophetic, it has to be in the fulfillment. That means when you came out of your life of sin, when you came out of being an old creature into being a new creature, you were brought forth, whether you know it or whether you don't know it, you were brought forth with silver and gold. Yeah. You were ordained. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the messenger. You were ordained unto great substance. It's in your redemption. It's highlighted. It's highlighted. It's like God said, don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss, don't, don't think it's just deliverance from sin. There's other benefits. There's other things included. Glory to God. You might say, you trying to hype us up. I'm trying to stir you up. Amen. And stirring me up. Glory to God. Why? I don't want to just give. I want to receive. Amen. Great substance. Great substance. Great substance. He brought us forth with silver and gold, and we plunder the riches of the world. So since you have all that, we're going to invite you to give some of it. What else are you going to do with it? What, what else are you going to do with that much? It only takes so much to pay your bills. Come on, it only takes so much to support whatever. What else are you going to do? We're going to give. We're going to give. Hallelujah. Dr. Dufresne used to say thank you for your enthusiasm. Praise the Lord. I feel it tonight. I mean, it's just, it's just knocking me out here. Praise the Lord. We're going to give. We're going to give out of, out of this great substance. I understand if you don't get it in two minutes, it's, it's a mind renewal, isn't it? Woo, glory to God. Can we uh, look up there? We've already talked about this tonight, different ways to give. You ready to do it? You ready to do it? Let's release our faith together. Father, tonight we're so blessed to be the redeemed. 
We're so blessed to be in the covenant that fulfills the old pictures. And thank you, Father, for the great substance with which you've brought us out, that which you've attached to our life. And Father, by faith, we reach for it. And we say we're going to take part of it now and sow it into your kingdom. We thank you that every need is met, that the budget is met, that we go way over the budget. Glory to God that there's plenty for all of your work. In Jesus' name, can you say amen real good tonight? Amen. Gentlemen, go right ahead. Hallelujah. Can somebody say glory to God? Oh, glory to God. Glory. Glory. We lift our voice. We lift off. Come on, somebody just say glory. Glory. says this, when I think about the Lord and how good He's been to me, all that He did for me, He brought me out, He raised me up. Psalm says that He put our foot, established our goings, raised us out of the miry clay, set our feet upon a rock, established our goings. He was made sin for us. God, who made him, Jesus, sin for us so that we could be made the righteousness of God. The righteousness be made. That pulpit was made a pulpit. It doesn't apologize for being made a pulpit. It was made a pulpit. We were made in his image. We were made righteous. We were raised up, set up on a rock, out of the miry clay. But God, who is rich in mercy, who raised us up, seated us in heavenly places, caused us to reign in life. I got saved when I was 15 years old. I was on drugs, dropped out of school, ran away from home, smoked so much pot every single day of my life. I was an alcoholic. I blew my brains out. I could barely think. I couldn't do school. But God, who is rich, rich, rich in mercy. They told my parents, they said, your oldest son, Rocky, he'll make it. But Guy and Cindy, they are never going to make it. But God, who is rich in mercy. Somebody loved our family enough to pray for us for eight years. His name was Henry. For eight years, he prayed for us. And one night I came home after dropping out of school, running away from home, came back home. I was going to go to Nashville and sing country, country songs. I was going to yodel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But God, <laughs> who is rich in mercy. One night I came home, I started singing at a bar. I came home uh, uh, also from working at Wendy's, the night shift. That's the mean shift. That's the scrubbing pan shift, you know. That's the no fingernail shift, you know. <laughs> and uh, came home, and, and uh, that night Henry had been there. He stopped five times on the way to our house and told God, I'm not going. I'm never going back. Those people, I prayed for them for eight years. They're not going to do anything. God said, go tonight. He said, he stopped five times on the way to our house and prayed. And that night, the 15 year old received Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 
it changed. I changed so much instantly that one entire side of our family came to Jesus. Aunts, uncles, cousins. It, it went all through our family. The change that happened. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. But God, who is rich in mercy because of and in order to satisfy His great love that He loved us with, even when we were dead in our sins and trespasses, has raised us up, seated us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm sorry tonight. I just can't help it. I just got to give him thanks and give him praise because he took what the world threw out. He took what was without a doubt lost and under and down. He took it and he raised it up. He caused it to become righteous. He caused it to become something in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Jesus, in Him I win, in Him I win, in Him I win tonight, in Him, in Him you win, in Him you win, in Him you win, in Him you win, in him you win. tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. This song that we're going to sing is my testimony song. The Lord gave it to me. It's my testimony. Can somebody just lift your hands and let's say thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
sees you in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Come on, lift up your hands and let's just thank him, Jesus. Come on, somebody say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When who we are in Christ is what we've been made to be. Why, and I'm saying to myself, not just to you, why would we talk of something lower? Why would we focus on something less? Dad Hagen was constantly encouraging us to feed on in him scriptures. And uh, he said, if you will do that, it will seem as though you've been born again, again. Any sign of being, putting yourself down, diminishing, accusing yourself, less than. It's that, of course, is the accuser, the brethren at work, but to accept those thoughts and to make them part of our daily life is to forget who we really are. No wonder we live dissatisfied when we forget who we really are. No wonder we struggle when we forget who we really are. But we're learning. I said we're learning, we're learning. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Miss Cindy, that's, that's so good. That's so good, so good, so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do a little bit of the chorus of that again. I don't know what the chorus is, but. invited to God's view. I said we're invited to God's view to see us the way he sees us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. <laughs> the Lord is good. He's good to me. Say it. He's good to me all the time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll turn around to somebody before you're seated. Give them a great big God bless you tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, if you missed this morning... Wow, because the word is so impressive. Thank God for the word, the word. The word just thrills you. It rewrites everything. It rewrites everything. It rewrites everything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me if you would. I had this in my heart last night to go this direction, and then he picked up uh, the direction Pastor Craig went, the direction 
this morning, and uh, we're just going to keep building and tagging on. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. And uh, we're going to read verse 17. Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of heaven is spoken of in the word and the kingdom of God. These are two different things. The kingdom of heaven is a location. But the kingdom of God is the government of that location here. The kingdom of God is how the kingdom operates. And this verse is telling us the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is God's method of moving. It's God's way of doing things. So the flow of the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. And that is the flow of the Holy Ghost. And that is what the Holy Ghost is. uh, He has, if I could say this, uh, well, Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. That's by the Holy Ghost. It's in us by the Holy Ghost to produce a flow for our daily life so that we can live heaven before we go there. We can live there before we go there. And it's not by, if I could say this, by trying to act spiritual, it's by walking righteousness, peace, and joy. That is a manifestation of how the kingdom of heaven, a location, that's the atmosphere, that's the flow, and it is to manifest here and produce days of heaven on earth. That's what the kingdom of God within us is to do, is to reproduce. On this earth, the exact same flow that heaven is enjoying now And nothing of heaven has been withheld from us except the location while we're on this earth. But the flow of heaven is ours now. So when it says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, every movement of the Holy Ghost is in this, is in this. Righteousness, peace, and joy. You're not going to find him operating outside these forces. Peace and joy are also listed as fruits. Righteousness is a gift. Peace and joy are the manifestation of that gift. You understand that peace and joy is the manifestation in our daily life that we're walking righteous. If we're not peaceful, if we're not joyful, we have laid down an awareness of our righteousness. I didn't say if your circumstances aren't peaceful. I didn't say if your circumstances aren't joyful. If you aren't. Circumstances do not have to offer us peace and joy because righteousness is manifesting it. I don't have to wait for circumstances to be favorable to offer me peace and joy for me to be peaceful and joyful. Why? Because we brought our own. The kingdom is within us. The kingdom is within us. Our our peace is in us. Our joy is in us. And we are to draw on that manifestation of righteousness. Peace and joy is an outflow that we are righteous. People can pray in the Holy Ghost 
great quantities of time? We should do. One of the greatest privileges of us, of, of, of being a spirit-filled believer, is the privilege of divine talk. It's God talk. Speaking in other tongues. People can spend great quantities of time doing that, but if they're not peaceful and they're not joyful, they're still out of the flow of the Holy Ghost. Because it's not just speaking in tongues. And I'm not diminishing that. But our life is to depict righteousness. How do we, how is our life to depict righteousness? Peace and joy. If we're not peaceful, we're not walking righteous. If we're not joyful, we're not walking righteous. We've been made it, but we're not implementing, drawing on these fruits of righteousness. Meaning this, circumstances are up and down, but righteousness isn't. It's not up and down. It's not moody. If you're moody, you're invited to a flow that the Holy Ghost has been trying to bring you into. And that is the flow of righteousness, which is the same yesterday and today and forever. Meaning people know what version of you they're going to get anytime they <laughs> greet you that day. If your family doesn't know what version of you they're going to get, that's your stepping out of the flow of God. Because righteousness is, it is constant. And it makes us constant. Amen. Peace and joy are forces. They're not feelings. They're forces. They are divine forces. And I will tell you, the devil and the flow of this world has no equal to these forces. If you will operate just on the kingdom that is within you and draw on peace and joy... No opposition is equal. None. None. And I can say firsthand, the day that death showed up, tragedy showed up, when my husband went home to be with the Lord, I want you to know grief and sorrow was no match for peace and joy. It was no match. It was no match. It was no match. And it is not me diminishing the place my husband held by saying we refused to be grieving and sorrowful. This is called righteousness. The day he left, my husband left this earth, my righteousness was not diminished with his exit. That flow of the kingdom was not diminished. Two years before he went home to be with the Lord, the Spirit of God said to me in 2011, all I want you doing is practicing peace. What's he saying? Practice the flow of the kingdom. Practice. What's, what's, look at the wording. Practice. Practice. The flow has to be practiced because the flow of the world is all around you and it doesn't have to be practiced. <laughs> you can at a moment get carried off in the wrong flow. But God's flow has to be chosen. The flow of this world does not have to be chosen. Just be neutral and you'll flow in that flow. But the flow of the kingdom has to be chosen uh, in the face of adversity, in the face of circumstances, I set before you life, death, blessing, cursing, choose. Here's the winner. Here's the winner. Ringy dingy. Here's the winner. Choose this one. 
Amen. So when we choose something less than peace, just because circumstances were less than peaceful, and we chose to be governed by the circumstances instead of by the kingdom within us, um, the devil had nothing to do with that. He offered the circumstance, but you make the choice. And we can't blame the devil if we chose something different than the flow of the kingdom just because he offered us circumstances. It's lack of, it's lack of skill, lack of skill, lack of skill, lack of skill. And I just want you to know peace and joy are forces. If you will stay in peace and joy, it will, it will override every other feeling, circumstance, symptom, and you will find yourself in a place of fellowship with God because God is only moving and manifesting and meeting us in the flow of the kingdom. What's the flow of the kingdom? Righteousness, peace, and joy. He's not meeting us outside that flow. He's not manifesting outside that flow. And healing is in that flow. Miracles are in the flow of the kingdom. The kingdom of God, it's a flow. It's, it's a manifestation of the way heaven flows there to flow down here so that we can have days of heaven on earth. But people think that their life has to depict what's around them. We are to flow with what's within us. Within, within. And this is why people have settled for and been duped into flows. Because they don't realize that what God authored for his people is days of heaven on earth. You say, oh, well, that's just idealistic. No, the kingdom is in you. The forces of righteousness, peace, and joy are in you. And you're the custodian of that flow. You're the custodian of how it flows in your life. Uh, over here is Pastor Candace Bram. This is where we're going to go to Collinsville and have a miracle crusade. She is akin to Miss Billy Bram. Uh, I got to be with them. Um, Pastor Chip is her husband. And I tell you what, I heard stories that only Oklahoma can tell <laughs> when I was down there. We had such a great time. Um, when I was just recently with them. And um, can I tell them about your wall, what's written on the back of your wall? Okay. So Pastor Chip Brim, who is her husband, said, when you go out to my sanctuary and into our sanctuary, you're going to see something written on the back wall. And it's these words, isn't Jesus wonderful? Kenneth Hagin. So it's a quote he made, and then Pastor Chip told us the backstory to that. He said, before Rama started, Rama was getting ready to start, to launch, and this would have been what? What did they start? 74, 76, 74? 74. And so um, right as they were getting ready to launch the charter year, Someone published a book against Brother Hagen, and then a television ministry picked that up and broadcast it nationwide, and it just escalated. And um, so there were 11 staff members at that time with Brother Hagen's ministry. I think they even got up, I don't know, something to like 450 
right, at, at one point. So they were in the beginnings is what I'm saying. And so this had been broadcast um, against the message, against the ministry, and it had been picked up and broadcast, you know, across television. And so Brother Hagen called together a staff meeting, and Sister Billy Brim was in one of those 11 that, that day. And they got together, and they were wondering, is this meaning that we're just not going to launch Rhema? Or wondering what's going to be the outcome. And they were, they were huddled together because they just, ah, oh, this, was, this was devastating, you know. And so they were in the, the, the room they were meeting in and they waited for Brother Hagen to come in and they were just watching, you know, their eyes glued. And he walked in and he sat down and he said, isn't Jesus wonderful? What was he doing? He was choosing his flow. Choosing his flow. Choosing his flow. What am I saying? It doesn't matter when it looks like whoever's against you, whatever's against you, how big the odds, you still have a choice. No circumstance, no person, no, no economic problem, no political ordeal takes your choice from you. You have to practice making the right choice every day so that when circumstances are escalated, you know how to choose the right flow in the face of pressure on the mind. And the Holy Ghost said to me in 2011, all I want you doing is practicing peace. What was he saying? Practice choosing the right flow. Practice choosing the right flow. How did I practice peace? I paid attention to my thought life. Every thought and any thought that did not arrive me at peace and joy was to be cast down. Answered, rejected, resisted, and not not entertained, not turned over That's in the thought right. life. And I had to practice that and practice that and practice that. Why? Because in the time of opposition, the devil will, if I could say this, he can energize yes. the mental arena. Yes. And it will be the most apparent thing to you if you're not practiced at the kingdom within you. And every day you choose your flow. And in the face of every circumstance, you choose your flow. At first, it can be a bit of a, I ha, you have to really pay attention and be very watchful. But there comes a time when if you become skilled at making that right choice, it is so easy to hook on to the right flow no matter what the, sa- the surrounding circumstances. If we're not in peace any given day, if we're not in joy any given day, we're not walking in our righteousness. Because peace and joy is the manifestation of how you know whether or not you're drawing on your righteousness. And we can all know whether we're peaceful or not. We can all know whether we're joyful or not. We are not called to cope. We are called to rule and reign. Rule and reign. I'm not holding body and soul together. I'm not counseling it out. I'm not talking it out. I'm drawing it out. I'm drawing it out. I'm drawing it out. Because when when you start talking the wrong flow, 
You give attention to the wrong flow. You magnify what the blood is, only the blood has the ability to deal with. You start magnifying the wrong thing, giving it attention. You're not letting it out, you're letting it in. Years ago, there was a pastor. He had a large church, still has a large church today. But he had a very unusual convert in his church. There was a girl who was, a, and she was, I want to say, anywhere from 16 to 19, and she got hooked up with the wrong crowd. And these people that she got hooked up with, it was a whole group of people, they would, in the city of this church, they were going up and down residential sections, and at nighttime, many times, people would have their curtains or drapery up, and they would see people through the windows, and they just pull out guns and start shooting anybody up and down the streets, and then they would go in and violate bodies. It was, it was horrific horrific. It was so base what they were doing. They captured, they, they captured them, the people that were older, that were doing all this, were convicted and thrown in prison, but because she was young. And she had not been as involved in the crime scenes as they were. And so she ended up not going to prison, but she ended up coming to this church and she got born again. And the pastor had to cast the devil out of her, you understand. She had been in their church then after that for five or six years, growing. And you would go, Ed and I, Ed was preaching there every year. And he would see, we would see this girl and we'd see her advancement. And about several years into this, uh, we went to the church. Ed was preaching there, and I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw those demons come back to her. And I said to the pastor's mother, who was the administrator for that church and ministry, I told her what I saw, and she said, you're exactly right. She said, that has happened. And I said, tell me about it. And she said... Dr. Summerall has been here recently, and they brought the girl before Dr. Summerall. And they said to him that those evil spirits that had troubled her in the past are trying to trouble her now. And he turns to the girl and said this, what are you doing? She didn't, he didn't say, what's the devil doing? He said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why? Because the devil can't do anything he wants anytime he wants. What are you doing? If you're troubled, what are you doing? What are you doing with your thought life? What are you doing with your words? What are you doing with uh, where you take your body? What are you doing on the computer? What are you doing? Because every action is choosing a flow. And he said to her, what are you doing? She said, I was approached by some people in Hollywood who want to make a movie of this events, these events surrounding her life. And so I've been sitting with their writers and I am rehearsing, telling what has happened. Why? When you talk it out, you're letting it in. Because you're choosing something. And she valued having a movie deal more than having freedom and peace. If Dr. Summerall was going to help her, he had to, he had to show her she had to change her choices. The flow of the kingdom of God is a choice for you to draw on. It's within you. 
You don't have to pray for it to come. It's in you. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. That which governs heaven is in you. And it's by the Holy Ghost that it's in you. And God will manifest in that flow. Finding out who you are and talking your righteousness will run out wrong flows. But talking about circumstances will embed you in wrong flows, entrench you in wrong flows. You have to choose the flow. Since I'm righteous, I choose peace today. Since I'm righteous, I choose joy today. And I can't have peace talking about how somebody did me wrong. I'm not making light that someone did you wrong, but there's a greater flow in you. And the, and the attention, the flow you give attention to is the flow you're going to partake of. Amen. Who knew? Who knew? That peace and joy was simply based on our choice. Simply based. It's not based on circumstances of what pressure comes. In the face of pressure, we have a flow, a divine flow on the inside of us. And Paul told Timothy, stir up. Stir up. Stir up. Stir up. Because everything that God has put in you has to be stirred. It has to be stirred. And no one else holds the stick but you. Nobody else can stir you. Now, you can be around stirred people. And it will help you stir you. But no one stirs you. You stir you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To receive healing, to receive miracle, we have to make sure we're in, we're in kingdom flow. People are trying to receive healing, partaking of a flow that's not of the kingdom. Worry, fear, offense, unforgiveness, and trying to receive healing. There's no healing in those flows. You've got to get out of that stream. And draw on the flow that's already in you. Praise the Lord. Kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I decided I will never have another depressed day because I choose. I choose. Has depression and fear tried to come? Yes, but because of divine help of the Holy Ghost with skill with the word, 30 seconds flat, it's shut down. 30 seconds flat. It used to take me three years, people, to get on the other side because I was trying to get there through the mental arena that has no life in it. The seat of the eternal life of God is in your spirit, not in your mind. The faith of God is in your spirit, not in your mind. No wonder the devil is constantly trying to draw you in that mental arena. Draw you in that mental arena because he's trying to separate you from your faith and you can never draw on the flow of the kingdom apart from faith. And I decided when I saw people depressed and living depressed, I thought, I said, that's not right. There was something on the inside of me. I never heard somebody say, this isn't, uh, you shouldn't have this even for a moment. But I decided, surely, surely the greater one in me did not plan something less than peace and joy for me. So I, I just said, God, if you'll teach me. If you will teach me, I guarantee you. Uh, the thing is, when I would go through different seasons, just like other people have, I would throw everything I knew at it. Therefore, when I got on the other side of it, I couldn't tell you which step got me on the other side. Why? Because I just threw everything at it. Thank God it got me on the other side, but that's not skill. Because I can't on purpose repeat it. If we can't on purpose repeat it, we're not skillful. Yeah. 
And I said, God, if you will show me the purposeful steps in the face of any adversity, and that's where the answer it book came out of. Get it. And not only get it, get it in you. Get it in you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and I've never again had a day that wasn't dominated by peace. I've never again had another day that wasn't dominated by joy because I'm not putting up with, as a righteous one, anything less than peace and joy because those are the manifestations of someone walking in their righteousness, the fruits of righteousness. Never again, never again. The day my husband went home to be with the Lord, I just said, devil, you just got the last thing off this family you'll ever get. You'll not, you'll not get me in a day of grief. I'm not giving you a moment of grief because you're, you're done stealing. I said, no more. I, I will not give you sorrow. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that there weren't times that I would weep, but not under a spirit of sorrow, not under a spirit of grief. I'm not, we're not robots, but I tell you what people in the body of Christ need to be taught how to address grief and sorrow because they don't know. They don't know. I didn't realize there was such a famine of it, of the, of the skill and the knowledge of it. Thank God, God walked me through it, but it wasn't the day of that, the day he taught it to me. It was two years ago before that, all I want you doing is practicing peace. And it, I ended up in a place in God, a place in the spirit. By, before my husband went home to be with the Lord, I was in a place of walking in the spirit. And I remember saying, I doubt many in the body of Christ even though this is available to them. To where the mind, if I could, have you ever had, I don't know if you went to a doctor or a dentist and they gave you a drug and you couldn't even put two sentences together and your mind was, if I could say this, cloudy, but it was great. The peace of God. The peace of God. That's that. When you cannot even conjure up a troubled thought. That's where I live. And I won't live. I won't. I will not permit anything less. I won't. I won't. Why? Because the, the flow within me, the kingdom within me, the kingdom within me, the kingdom within me. If I will side in with the kingdom within me, it forbids anything else that's contrary to peace and joy. Amen. It forbids it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you, if you will just decide it's possible, it's not only possible, it's yours, but it's yours to have the privilege of becoming skillful with. That's a privilege to become skillful with it. A privilege. You know, Cindy was, where's Cindy? Cindy was up here and she was saying how people said, this one will never make it. And I turned to Pastor Debbie and I said, not only did she make it, she made it with the leading prophet of the land. God did not just put her in a, you know, in raccoon holler somewhere. He put her with the leading prophet of the generation. Yeah. If you're troubled, you're invited to higher flow. And I've said this and I'm going to keep saying it. Victory is not the devil leaving you alone. That's not victory. That's not victory. Victory is you being untroubled right in the midst of any circumstance, any opposition, and you don't even notice. Amen. Yes. 
Yes, yes. You're so absorbed with the flow of the kingdom within you yeah. that you don't even notice the flow of the cursed flow of the world around you that you've been redeemed from. Turn with me if you would. Let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Verse 7. I'm going to read out the Amplified Classic Translation. So if you have that available to you, pull it up. Psalm 91. Would we not say this is Old Covenant? Everything of the Old Covenant does not need to pass away. <laughs> we're redeemed from the curse, but we're not redeemed from the blessings because we don't need to be. We have a better covenant. So we had all the blessings of the old covenant plus, plus. So Psalm 91 verse 7 a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be. Old covenant, next two words, yourself inaccessible. Yourself inaccessible. Why are you inaccessible? Because you're in the secret place yes. Yes. of the Most High. What's the secret place? It's the realm of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Raised and seated with Christ. Right. We have been positionally raised there. Now we need to function from Amen. there every day. Amen. Not being odd, not being weird. How are we functioning there? Walking in our righteousness and staying in the flow of peace and joy. Then we're functioning there. Yourself inaccessible. God said to me, as I was sitting in a Brother Copeland meeting in Southwest Believers several years ago, and I got a phone call while I was at the meetings, and someone asked me for um, a sum of money that they needed. They were in a very difficult spot. I had helped them once before. So when they, I got a second call, for, a, and it was a large sum to me, and um, I immediately thought, no, I've helped once, but I'm, I, I'm not going to do it again because it would take me personally, it would eat into my comfort <laughs> numbers, yeah. right? Just calculating. So of myself, I said, I'm not going to do it, but I never make a decision without consulting wisdom. Sure. And I asked God, I said, what do you say? I said, I'm, I'm, I have a mind not to do it, but what do you say? And he said, I want you to do it. I wilted a little. <laughs> Why? Because I'd been calculating. You calculate, you will. So... So he said, they had enough faith to call you, and I will honor that measure of faith. He said, you have enough faith to believe me, and I'll honor that. God is not looking to disqualify people. He's looking to, he'll hook on whatever level, whatever level, whatever level. And so I said, okay, it's my honor. It's my honor. So I texted my financial gal, and I said, wire them immediately today, this amount of money into their account. And so I go back into the service, 
and uh, I'm sitting in the service, and the devil says to me, you have just now put yourself in a very bad financial situation by doing that. And I answered it. I said, I never put myself in a bad financial situation obeying God. Never. Because see, if you don't hear from God, you don't have a ready answer to opposition. That's right. That's why I take time to get it clear in my spirit. I don't say that I have to hear a voice. I, I do have to have the witness of the spirit. And I can have the witness of the spirit in a moment. And you can be so um, developed and become so skillful that in a moment, I know exactly what the witness of my spirit is. It, I'm not talking about hours of prayer. And the witness of the Spirit is still divine. And it's still supernatural. And it's still God leading. So I answered that thought because I had a ready answer why I heard from God. That's why it's so important that you have the witness of, your, of the Spirit before you make a, make a move because you're going to have opposition. And what the, what the spirit witnesses with you is your answer to that opposition. So spend that answer. You have to repeat what God bore witness with you about in the face of opposition. You don't have to go say, pastor, would you pray for me? No. What God say to you in your spirit, what did, what seemed right to you in your spirit, not hearing words, even what seemed right. That's the answer to opposition. Tell it to that opposition. So again, I was sitting there and out came these, out came those same words. You have just put yourself in a very difficult situation financially by doing that. And I said to the devil, I never put myself in a bad, difficult situation obeying God. Never. And this went back and forth for 30 minutes. Every time he said it, I answered him. Every time. But I noticed he kept saying it. Well, that doesn't mean failure because for 40 days and nights, Jesus was hearing the wrong thing and he was answering right every time, but the devil kept talking. Just because the devil keeps talking doesn't mean you're answering wrong. It just means you got to keep answering. <clears throat> so um, at the end of 30 minutes, this time I didn't hear the devil say something. I heard God say something. And he said, if you would live in my presence... You wouldn't even have to listen to that. In other words, what was he saying? You're, li you're hearing that because you're too accessible to the mental arena. You're not far enough into the secret place. That's basically what it is. You can be more or less in the flow of the kingdom that's in you. You can have a lower flow of it, or yeah. you can have an overwhelming flow of it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 You know, someone can come into this room here and just stand at the door. And just because they can see it doesn't mean they can access anything of the room until they come in further. The further you go in, the more you can access. You can sit on a chair. You can go up, touch the keyboard. You can, you can access different things available in the room the further you go into the room. The further you go into peace. The further you go into joy. How does that happen? Because you went further in renewing your mind in righteousness. Yeah. The problem is this. Many times people are trying to work up joy. They're trying to work it up. They're trying to work it up. But it comes because, let's take it backwards. Without, there is no joy without peace. And there is no peace without righteousness. So people are trying to put on joy when they need to put on their righteousness. And then joy is no problem. Peace is no problem. They need to refresh themselves. I'm in him. Everyone with a bad self-image, it's a righteousness needing to be renewed mind. 
that's your problem. It's not how you look. It's not how you dress. It's not what kind of social status you have or don't have. It's not education. It's all about a lack of establishing yourself in righteousness. He's made you righteous, but you have to establish that in you. And you can't do it unless you're interested in it. You have to be interested who I am in him. We have posted on our website all the in him, in whom, in Christ scriptures for you to download for free. Download them to your device or print them off and feed on them and quit trying to trouble people's lives by trying to improve your self-image. Listen, in pastoring 25 years, I've seen one of the greatest enemies to people is a poor self-image that comes because their mind's not renewed to who they are in Christ. They're trying to feel good about the old man and the old man's dead. And you can't dress up the old man and make him look any better. They're trying to dress up the old man. They're trying to feel good about the old man, who they are in the flesh, who they are in the natural. It's who you are in him. Amen. Now, Pastor Craig so masterfully, with the help of the Holy Ghost, brought the word on righteousness this morning. And I went back to him and I said in the room, I'm so thankful he stopped when he did because he's going to preach everything. Leave none of it for any of us. The whole purpose of righteousness is not peace and joy. That's, that's the outflow of it. That's the fruit of it. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of righteousness is so we're one with the Father. We're one with Him. We can come into His presence with no guilt. No sin. We're clean. For His fellowship. Fellowship. That's the purpose of righteousness. And when we walk in the purpose, you won't have any problems with finances. When you have made fellowship with God your enjoyment and the center of your, your day, your thought life, you won't have problem receiving healer when you're fellowshipping. You won't have any problem receiving healing when you're fellowshipping with the healer. You won't have any problem receiving prosperity when you're fellowshipping with the provider. People are trying to get the outflow of him, but bypassing him. It's him. It's him. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Praise the Lord. Verse 1. This is Jesus. If you want us to hear Jesus' prayer life, this is a prayer in this chapter. His communion with the Father. He's talking about his exit. John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father... The hour is come. We should know the hours of our life. Yeah. He knew the hours of his life. The hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life, to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal. That they may know thee. And they may know thee the only true God. And know Jesus Christ. This is it. Remember what Jesus said to the church in the book of Revelation. Warning them. Said 
You got a lot of good things going on. You don't put up with this. You don't put up with that. You're strong in this and you're strong in that. But I have one thing against you. And he said, you've left your first love. You've left me out of it all. You're just doing the work apart from that place in me. And he said, repent or else I will come and take your candlestick. In other words, you're producing fruit, but you're doing it apart from fellowship with me. And I don't want fruit representing me that I'm not involved in. What's this mean? If you will nourish your fellowship and your enjoyment of God, you will occupy and step into a flow that peace and joy just become your, it becomes your, your flow. It's not just the kingdom's flow. It's your flow. If you will tend to your fellowship with him, everything else gets watered. I'm not saying you don't have to resist the devil. I'm not saying you don't have to use your faith, but you do it from that place of fellowship. And people are trying to exercise authority apart from fellowship and saying, why doesn't this faith stuff work? Because you have his faith and it has to be nourished by him. Amen. Your righteousness was for one reason, one purpose, fellowship with him. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain. It's so you can come. It's one, oneness, oneness, oneness that Jesus said that they may be one as you and I are one. It's all about oneness. I said, it's all about oneness, right? That's the purpose of righteousness. But the outflow of righteousness is peace and joy. Well, praise the Lord. God said to me on one occasion, um, after Ed went home to be with the Lord and I had much on my plate to deal with, all kinds of legal things, banking things, city things. And um, somebody else added another, threw another wrench into the whole thing. It's, it was completely unnecessary. And I, I was so disappointed because they knew a measure of what I was dealing with. And then just to throw this unnecessary thing in it, I, I was just disappointed that they did it. And I'm sitting, getting ready one day to come to the Bible school to teach, and I'm thinking about how I'm disappointed about that. And after about 30, 40 minutes of thinking about that, (laughs) God spoke to me. He said, you can think about that if you want. But he said, but you have to give up fellowship with me to do it. Everything we think about or occupy with is an exchange for fellowship. Is it worth it? Is it a good exchange? (laughs) So you can think about how they did you wrong. You can think about and talk about and try to get it out, but you're really letting it in. Well, praise the Lord. I'd rather have fellowship with him than have the last word with someone else. So Brother Hagen walked into that room and said, isn't Jesus wonderful? And he said, let's just do what the word says. Let's pray for those who persecute us. So they turned it into a prayer meeting, not of retaliation, but God, 
We trust you. And within a month, all of those involved were disarmed. And I won't tell you how. Brother Hagen didn't have to do anything. Every bit of that opposition was undone within a month. Why? Because Brother Hagen refused to come out of the flow of the kingdom. And he said, isn't Jesus wonderful? That's the flow of the kingdom. Because Jesus said, this is life eternal. That they may know the Father and his Son. This is life eternal. Let me tell you something. Paul was used by God with miracles, raising the dead. Some of the most remarkable manifestations that heaven has. And at the end of it all, he said that I may know him. Why? Miracles and power are no substitute for fellowship with him and the enjoyment of him. And many times people want greater power, greater anointing, greater mantles. That's fine, but it's found in the fountain of him. Don't get so occupied with what flows out. Just get occupied with him. And everything that flows out is him. Well, stand with me to your feet. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do we want to do that today, Miss Cindy? Do we want to do it? Miss Kim, you want to do it? We want to? Okay. Uh, I don't know where that mic went. I had it somewhere. Thank you. I don't know. Is this the one we use? Is this the one? You going to give me lots of good juicy reverb? <laughs> this is a song. Can you hear me? Am I, am I still on? Uh, this is a song. The music was written by someone else, but I wrote the words to it. And it was just really the purpose of righteousness. Um, I think they're going to put the words up. Not so you can sing. Don't do that. <laughs> but there's so many words. We don't want you to miss it. So are y'all going to put up the words for them on the screen? That would be a blessing. Hallelujah. The price was great to turn man's fate from death and sin. So God's Son was born to earth through virgin birth to carry out the plan of heaven come to earth. Jesus moved in mighty power then fulfilled redemption's hour. He took man's place joined human race and died as man. There was no other way for sin's price to pay. Born to die and bring men nigh to God's presence. I lift my voice to pray. For the blessings that belong to me, purchased through your Son, I lift my hands to praise you, for redemption's plan is done, and the greatest of all is I can say, my Father and I. darkness failed to have its way. Man's enemy and foe suffered defeat's blow when Jesus stripped him of his power and brought him low. Then he arose from the grave where life could not stay. Victory complete, no more defeat, a 
brand new day the reign of death to end man ceding to a sin the curse reversed the reign of life to For the blessings that belong to me Purchased through your son I lift my hands to praise you For redemption's work is done And the greatest of all is I can say And the greatest of all is I can say, my father and I, my father and I, my father and I, There's the purpose of righteousness, oneness. That when we talk to our Father, it's no different than when Jesus talks to his Father. That's it. Hallelujah. Let's do the chorus again and have everyone sing it with us. I lift my voice to pray. For the blessings that belong to me, purchased through your Son, I lift my hands to praise you, for redemption's plan is done, and the greatest of all is I can say, my Father. My father and I, my father and I are one. Hallelujah. How can the flow of the father and how can we be one in the flow of him, not be mine? And it is the kingdom of God that's within you. Hallelujah. Are you helped tonight? We've settled for far too little. We've settled for what the world is sentenced to. But it's not our sentence. Amen. What you got, Miss Cindy? And a brave Jesus that connect to see que la gramasa. And a pata rige ze e sa gre mon jonge lena ankine faculete e kapa ke li mon greane. And I have raised you up, and I have set you in a place, a place of love, a place above, a place above where the enemy does reign, a place above where I've given you my name, a place where you've been raised to rule and to reign in life. So come and take your place where there's no sin and strife. Come and be raised in my arebejege, for I have set you in that place, and the enemy has no profesti griasare in that place. So raise up, lift up, 
Look up and begin to say, greater is he who's in me this day, and I have been raised. I've been raised to a place of victory, been raised to a place of love, been raised to a place where I'm seated in Christ, seated far above, been raised to reign, raised to sing, raised for peace, raised for him to be my everything. And men bege la grigejet da zubrege ala. Things will change in the natural way, in the natural realm, as you take your place with him at the helm. As you say, God is my father, and there is no other. And he shall prevail against the very gates of hell. And though the enemy tried to rise up and tried to come my way, tried to detour me, tried to make it stay, God has said, Mangre be la guinemena. He is under your feet. He sits in a seat of defeat. He sits in a place far under. So rise up. <laughs> Rise up and begin to laugh and begin to sing. Rise up and begin to decree and declare all oh, what he has said. Oh, from Mongene, on the meaning of Ghana, just mum boom 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 gunje gene, just enging gingling gingin dene is not enough. You must declare and decree, I am a child and a son. Of his love. Oh. Today is my day. Victory has come my way. No longer do I sit in defeat. For I've been raised in Christ. And I am a king. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love the story of one minister has largest church in the world and the Bible school students asked him one time said because God's given you such a large voice in the body of Christ we can only imagine how much opposition you face and he goes I guess so I just haven't noticed there you go there you go Depression comes, but do you, do you have to give it notice? You know, all resisting doesn't have to be demonstrative, but it does have to come from what you know. And sometimes, <laughs> I mean, Jesus with his body demonstrated his words, get thee behind me, Satan, and he turned his whole body. What's that mean? I choose my notice. I choose what I notice. You put yourself in front of my eyes and I put my back to you. He was choosing his flow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you're here tonight and you say, I came because I want hands laid on me for healing but I can't be here any other night. We're going to minister to everyone who wants hands laid on them for healing on Friday night. But if you say, I can't be here any other night, I've come tonight for the purpose of having hands laid on me, I want us to take a moment and minister to you. So if that's you, raise your hand if there's anybody in here that's you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So everybody gets to come back? Good. Good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you, what, what do you, what do you want? Uh, what do you want? What do you want? Let's do something. Go, go. Can you go out? <laughs> he raised you up. Yes, he did. To reign in life as a king, he raised you up. Yes, he did. Over everything of the enemy, raised you up in life to sing. Raised you up in life to shout. Oh, come on, lift your voice and say that's what it's all about. He raised me up. Oh, to reign in life as a king. Come on, raise me.
believe this service is complete without Miss Reba coming up. Whatever, whatever, whatever. You can exhort, you can preach, you can sing, you can whatever. Here's one for you. <laughs> I'm walking in victory. He a perfectionist. She never presented a song that wasn't perfect and polished and wanted me to be like that. And, and nothing against her. I mean, my goodness, God used her in such a powerful way. But to get up and do something, I, I want to be like her when I grow up. I want to be a water walker like that. I want to be able to just step on out and who cares if it's right or wrong because it's right in God. I'll never forget one night I was in the glory, and I mean, I was in a deep place in the glory, and it was called the orchestra. And there was a piano player on the earth playing, but I was in this heavenly dimension, and the orchestra was playing. The orchestra was made out of trees. It was made out of the waves of the ocean. It was made out of people and angels. It was just phenomenal. And all of a sudden, I looked, and they had score paper, and it was alive. It was beautiful. But I saw this mischievous look on everybody's face. Even the tree had a mischievous look about it. And all of a sudden, the earthly piano player made a mistake. But what happened, they played the mistake with him. So everybody in heaven, the same wrong note that he hit, they hit the wrong note, and all of a sudden, it was right because everybody did it. Come on now. night she started with I go to the rock of my salvation. Her mama wrote that. Did you know that? The anthems that of the church that we just have lived with for years came out of this fountain. And I tell you what, thank you, Miss Reba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, and when, when they were up here and Miss Cindy would laugh and I thought, you know, fellowship with my husband and I, you with your spouse, when you're in sweet times of fellowship, it's not just all, you're so wonderful. You're so great. It's like, let's go eat. And it's like, you, you talk together, but you laugh together. The fellowship of God is multidimensional. It's not just a religious posture. It's a flow of everyday life that every aspect of your life, you involve him, you turn toward him. And God said one of the greatest things to me that was such a help to me, and I've said it to you, and I'm gonna keep saying it because he said it. And he said, to live in my presence doesn't come by earning, it comes by turning. And he said, no one ever turned toward me and me not met them there. And I don't care what place you've been in, you can turn in a moment. 
I mean, Hezekiah turned and it added 15 years to his life. He turned to the wall. The prodigal son turned and it put his life back on the course of the, of the best plan. Everybody can turn. Everybody can turn. And so much of the time, we, this is where we miss it. We turn towards God trying to feel him. And if we don't feel him, we think that we're not. I don't turn to him to feel him. I don't check me to feel him. Does that make sense to you? How many times people turn and say, do I sense him? Do I You're checking you. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else up here got anything? Is, are we good? David, you good? You good? You good? Preachers, y'all good? Pastor Craig, you good? Okay. You don't want to miss in the morning. You say, who's going to be preaching? Well, I don't know. We'll find out. You got to be here. You're glad you found out this morning, though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We glorify you. We glorify. I want that song you finished with last night, Surely Goodness. Surely. Surely Goodness. Surely Mercy. The anointing came on me for something, so let's do it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Um, praise the Lord. I'm, I want you, everyone, you can stay standing, but you're going to stay at your seat, and I'm going to come to you. Um, just give me a moment to hear. Just, you, I want to get one other thing right. Just sing that at last.
Uh, Pastor Craig, I want you to come up here. You come up here. And you and I, we're going to bless the ministers. We're just going to walk out. The ministers, if you want us to minister to you, you don't have to, but you have to be full-time ministry. Full-time ministry. Um, hold your hands out in front of you like this. You're going to grab their right hand. I'm going to grab their left hand. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We receive in Jesus' name. 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 Go ahead, love. Receive in Jesus' name. Ah, it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. A new day. Ah, <laughs> things that have been entrusted to you and imparted to you through the years that have been waiting for the day. And it's that day. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it, Father. For it, Father. Let's go. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Ah! We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it, Father. Uh, uh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's start down at this end, Pastor Craig. We're just going to reach over people, so forgive us as we do that. Receive in Jesus' name. in this section. Come back here. Come back here. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Receive it, love. Ah! Receive it, love, in Jesus' name. Is there any over here? We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Receive it, in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. mantle a different mantle a different one than you've walked under I don't know what it is it's for you to know but it's it's another mantle another an additional mantle added ah my my sticky 
but you're a novice in that mantle. So it's going to take time of training before you'll even see the fruit of that mantle because there's learning time under that. Ah. So we can be at one level of skill with one mantle, but a learning level of skill with another. So don't think that they run parallel together, they don't. So don't try to, God will make it clear to you, but don't try to step out as though it's developed. It's not developed. So just, just stay faithful, preparing, working under that, letting God train you, and then whenever He says and however He says. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you. Mm. You're okay. You're okay. Shh. We thank you. We thank you for it, Father. Right here. Right here. We thank you, Father. We, uh, oh. we thank you for it, Father. We thank you. Down here, are there more? More? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Receive it. Oh. Receive it in Jesus' name. Anybody else in this section come up to the front? another being imparted to you love there's something more being imparted hallelujah we thank you father we thank you father chelsea sit down love if you wouldn't let us pass you by ah oh, receive it in jesus name receive it in oh shh. jennifer something something additional went in you Something additional, additional went in you. We thank you, Father. We, in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it. Oh. Mm. Dealing with things, dealing with things in prayer, dealing with things in prayer, there's going to be more of the responsibility of that. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Whoa! Mm. Anybody else there? Come, come up and just wait. Just wait here. The rest of y'all in this section, just come and wait here for the front.
Thank you, Father. Just right, hold out your hands in front of you like this, down the down the aisle here. Just hold. We thank you, Father. Ah. Shh. Receive it in Jesus' name. Oh. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. divine assigned a divine assignment ha 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 a divine assignment upon her a divine assignment upon her ha ha praise god don't settle for anything but the divine the divine assignment in that hallelujah we thank you uh, receive it in jesus name. Uh, in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. No more. No more up there. No more up there. It's robbed you of much. No more. No more. Quit going there. Your answer is not there. Quit looking there. Ah, because there's more in you than there. And this is being robbed from because you're playing with this and trying to make this behave. Ignore it. Ah. Leslie and I, I, I don't you you the thing I love about you you can take very straight talk but there's other people who need to hear what I'm saying to you because they're in the exact same boat and there's been so much advancement robbed from you and it displeases me for you does that make sense I'm not displeased with you but displeased for you because it's just been that has it's held back so just decide I'm done I'm done going I'm done trying to figure it out here just set this aside you turn toward here quit asking quit quit asking questions to everyone when you ask questions that's a sign you're in the mental arena there are no questions in the spirit arena. There's answers in the spirit arena. So when you say, well, what about this and what about that? You're in the middle arena. 
You can't find it in the mental arena. I start, ah, new day, new day, new day, new, 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 new day in every way. In every way. In every way. And how to say this? No feeling almost like I should not be this joyful, this fulfilled and this satisfied because of my husband's no longer here. Mm -mm, none of that. None of that. Go full footed into the enjoyment of the fulfillment of the plan. <laughs> We thank you, Father. Uh, uh, oh, we thank you, Father. Uh, I thank you, Father, for fresh utterances from heaven. Fresh revelation. Uh, fresh utterances of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, we thank, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Is that all the ministers? Is that all? Praise the Lord. Stand with us to your feet. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We glorify you. We give you Everyone has an angel assigned to him, at least one, right? We don't have time to teach on that. But there's also what is called in the scripture familiar spirits. Why are there familiar spirits that are familiar with your life? Not because they have a place in you, but because the devil's not all-knowing. So he's got to send cohorts of his around you to observe you so he can learn you because he's not all-knowing and if we turn toward them they can gain expression and trouble us and uh, so I said that because it can happen doesn't mean somebody's oppressed possessed anything like that. It just means if they get our attention, they will take a place of expression in our lives. So that which has troubled you, it's just followed you just because the devil's trying to learn how he can best affect you. So it's in advancement, it's held you back. You go to make steps, and I don't know if this means anything to you. Does it mean something to you, love? Uh -huh. No more. No more. Father, we thank you. We, we thank you. you. You take your hands. You take your hands off his life. You hinder no more. You hinder no more. But now, uh, faith strides that will be effective. Advancement, advancement. So, you, no, no, you don't have a right. No, you don't have a right. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Say, say this after me. Say, Father, I obey you in all things. I rely upon divine help. Uh, and I submit. I agree. I agree. Now, Spirit, you take your hands off. You take it. You take. You there. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. 
There he goes. We thank you, Father. Shh. Now you'll notice a difference. You'll notice a difference. You'll notice a difference. Listen, everybody has to do that at some point around. You have to. Yeah, you talk to things. <laughs> yeah. But God just given you some extra help. That's all it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, there are times that God will let someone else help you, and there's times he won't. Depends on what he's trying to get you skillful in. Because there were times that my husband said to God, God, let me put my hands on her and deal with that thing that's troubling her. He said, nope, nope, she's got to learn. I had no idea that we'd be on television teaching it. But I'm so glad I learned it because now I can help people. So there are times that God will let someone else help you and then there's times that he won't because he knows you have the faith to deal with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, if I'd had it my way, I'd let it deal with everything. But we all, we all have to develop. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. So, love, just say it's a new day for me. It's a new day for me. It won't seem, you'll, you'll notice a difference, but it will be dramatic over time. Maybe not immediately, but over time. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We glorify Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it so much. We appreciate it so much. We honor you. We magnify you. We're so grateful. So grateful. So grateful. We thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Noel, where are you? Pastor Noel, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Just whatever God gives you. You're not on yet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not on yet. Take, take this one. Yes. Uh, the Lord told me before I say this to tell you that I, the, the word I will, the Holy Ghost, I will release it, is for this company, for this team. And the anointing that was imparted even tonight, I will only speak with regards to this, this team, this, this Tacoma Shike, the team, uh, the company. I don't know others, but this is what I know. Uh, um, God is bringing this team, uh, God bringing this company into the fullness of the Spirit. The word that was given, the pastors, the, 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 uh, uh, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, and, and the evangelists, in this company, uh, the hundredfold flow, bringing us into a hundredfold flow, um, bringing us to a hundredfold flow of righteousness. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we can't do. Who could sit there? There's a flow of joy, but there's going to be a hundred flow, a hundredfold, a hundredfold of flow of joy, peace, righteousness, a hundred. A hundredfold flow, ha masike of the revelation, uh, divine flow, accelerated flow, accelerated oh flow of the spirit of seeing and knowing, yeah bakoso logroshoto. Ah, this team, this team, this company, yeah cool tichite. And tonight is the down payment of that anointing, the damato kusoto. Yeah, yeah, you hear that Hagen said, I can only go 
this far. S certain flow of the anointing. Certain percentage of the anointing. This team, this company, you got to we God is bringing us to a full flow. Full flow of the anointing. Because full flow of the word, the word, the revelation of the word and the spirit. Full flow of this team. This team, oh ma, do go sete, es sokoto sote, and it's coming rapidly, it's coming in an accelerated way. Ya, to ko, to ka, soko, te ke, sat, po, ken, te ko, soko, to, 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 tamda. First, the ministers, and then the congregation, and then the people. Akoto, celebreshe, ya, ko, kishika, miando, go soto, to, 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 te, te, re, balo, go sende. A full flow, full flow, full flow. Fullness, fullness of the plan, fullness of the flow of the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, fullness of the flow of the gifts of the Spirit. O katis le gisso kamah tere beko celebrate yakoto soto to yakato soto namte keso engo soko engro soko eto soko to ta none will be lost, none will be lost, none will be lost. None will be lost. Akoto, akato, akato, akata, akato, ataso, akato, yakete, yokoto, meta, koto, yaka, deke, ando, aka, deke, yaka, deteta. Remember the gato, the gato, yeah, yeah. Many died in the wilderness, but there are a certain group of, of, of aids of people that God said, I will bring them to the promised land. I will bring them, and none of them, none of them, none of them, except Except those, except those that God said they, their carcasses will die in the wilderness. None, none, none of this team, none, none, none of the ministers, regardless of what your symptom, regardless, your body, your body will be fully healed, fully healed. Yeah, none will be people, none will be people, none, none will be poor, none. The full flow of the finances, the full flow of the blessings of God, the full flow, the full flow, the full flow. Yeah, not the queso, yet because God is bringing us into a full flow, fullness of the blessing, fullness of the gifts of the Spirit, fullness for the ministry gifts, fullness because it's time, it's the hour, and this theme. This team, this team, this team, this team, I say this team, I say this team, I say this team will bring the full flow of the word and the spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Mario and Debbie, are they still here? Pastor Mario and Debbie, come up here. Come up here. Uh, nothing will work as it ought. Now listen, I didn't say it won't work, but I said nothing will work as it ought without agreement. And that agreement is love. That agreement is love. Give me that hand. Uh, Father, thank you. Working it, working it in them, working it in them, working it in them working it in them because without it you only have a measure but you want it as it ought to be as it ought as it ought as it ought both of you agreeing with one another in love agreeing with one another in love and then other things will get addressed by that love flow we thank you father we worship you father we worship you we worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, you don't want to miss in the morning. You don't want to miss tomorrow night. You don't want to miss any of them. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for what we've received. We thank you. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Well, 
There's more for us this week. The plan holds more, and we're, we've, we're receivers of it. I said we're receivers of it. Hallelujah. Turn around to a few people around you and say, the Lord is good to me all the time. You can be dismissed. God bless you.